All right, I'm going to show you how I deployed this React app to production. And then at the very end, I'm going to show you how you can do this yourself using Railway. So let's go ahead. We can take a look at how the best color website works. So right here um, in Railway, everything is a service. So when I click new, it's asking me what kind of service I wanna create. So I can create one from a GitHub repo. And basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna look at the GitHub repository that I select. So I'm picking this one. You can see a action. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna look for a Docker file. And based on that Docker file, it's going to do a build, create a Docker image, and then run that Docker container. And then that should set up, you know, do some arbitrary thing on the server that Railway is provisioning for us. So this is how our web app is run, right? So this is just a service on Railway and that's all defined here. Now, the reason this failed is because it requires a variable. You can take a look at the logs here. So the reason this failed is because it requires a database URL. So right here, it's trying to generate the Prisma client and then deploy some migrations to our database, but it doesn't have the uh, environment URL for the database. So in order to do that, we can click new variables. And what's really nice is they have references to the variables of the services in this project. So I have a Pro Postgres database here and one of the variables is the database URL. So I can add that here. So now it's gonna redeploy. I don't think we have to refresh for it to happen. So it's getting restarted there. And then if we look here at the variables, all of these were created by Railway when I created the service. So if I wanted to just create a new Postgres database, I can just click that. And they even have one for Redis, MongoDB, MySQL. So this is really nice. This is basically doing all of the things on AWS that you would have to do manually if you wanted to put your site um, live. And I think what we can do too is we can look at how much my bill is right now. Cause I'm on the $5 hobby plan. I have three three projects, so three separate servers. I started on December 20th. So currently I've used almost a dollar, charges you gigabyte per minute. I get $5 of included usage on the hobby plan and then the hobby plan itself costs $5. So after you exceed the $5 credit amount, then you're gonna have to start paying more. So it looks like this one is gonna cost $1.26. I mean, that's super cheap for an entire month. That's great. Cause this one has a database. This one also has a database. And then my portfolio website is an Astro. Uh, so it's just like static HTML basically. So we have this set up. Let's go ahead and look at the public networking section. If we click generate domain, it should take us here. Okay, so it looks like it was found. Okay, so it just takes a second for it to actually deploy, right? But you can see here we have our new URL, this new service, and it's already up. So that's very painless, right? The only thing that you have to set up is the Docker file. And they have a bunch of different docs on how the build works. There's a couple of different ways you can build it with Nix packs. I've never used that before, so I just stayed away from that. And I just built it with a Docker file. It just looks for a docker file at the root so why don't we go and we can take a look at the docker file it's super simple um anyone who's familiar with docker i mean this is gonna be a breeze so we have the base image we're gonna install our module set up some environment variables install some dependencies we need for prisma on the server now we're gonna install everything for the app that we need we copy some node modules to the build uh, copy those over to the server, generate our Prisma client, uh, and then we're going to use the database URL. We're going to deploy our database migrations. That's right here, just Prisma deploy command. And then we're going to, you know, copy everything over to our main server, and then we'll just run start right here, just running the node server based on the build directory. So when it runs that build command, right, like that's kind of the nuts and bolts of how all of this works. I'm using the remix framework. So they handle all of that for us, not something that we really have to concern ourselves with, but we have a build command. And the first thing it does is it's gonna do this build routes command. And this is a pretty cool 
package. So we'll take a look at um, the routes gen command that we have. So I'm going to build it and we take a look. It's in app routes.ts. So it creates a TypeScript file for us and it basically creates type definitions for all of the routes that we have. So we have an index route, we have the stream route, and then the votes route. And if I go over here now, say I wanted to do a redirect and I wanted to use the helper function from routes gen so I can pick the actual route. You can see it's all type safe now. So it only shows the routes that we actually have files for. So if I did this return redirect, then it knows that this route path actually exists. So that's pretty cool. Um, just a simple little command that we can add to actually get the uh, type safety there. Uh, then we're going to do build remix. That's going to put it in the public folder. And then we will build our server. And what this is going to do is it's going to look here. Um, and right here, you know, we're just using the public directory that we made from remix. And then we will bundle this into the build directory right here. Uh, so that's just a simple node node.js server, right? Um, and it's just listening on whatever port we specify. And that's how they can reach the React app. So cool, that describes, you know, all the production setup. And then I would say for the dev setup, uh, also pretty straightforward. So for dev, uh, we're gonna run two separate processes um, all at the same time. So we have dev server. All this is going to do is just run our server, right? So Node.js, and it's going to serve our React app. And then it's going to run our dev routes. And then we have one other simple script that is going to set up our database. So right here, we have the Docker Compose file. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have the name for our container, name for our service. We have some environment variables for the database. We're stating what port it's going to listen on and then what port to expose in the actual virtual machine that the Docker images or the Docker container is running on. And then uh, we also have a name for the volume. So the reason you do this, say you have two Docker containers that run on the exact same port, right? And they are referencing the exact same path for this Postgres data, which is the space for our database. So when we name it, we'll make sure that there's separate volumes. And so it's not getting reused across different containers. So this is my local running Postgres container right, for my database. And this is for the best color website. Now, if I stop this, and then I start this and we refresh. Now we're gonna see that we're looking at entirely different database. But then if I switch back, we can see that there's a bunch of different data in it. So that's what this is for, just so that you can use the exact same Docker file setup for all your Postgres databases locally, but then the volumes can be attached separately. So every single time you reset your database or make a change, you don't have to undo that or worry about any type of collisions, anything like that. It's also super easy for me to connect to the production database. There's nothing super important in here, so I can just showcase this. Um, and this is the one that's sent up on railway, right? So we can just take a look there. We also have the database schema. So this is just give you an idea of uh, what we have. Our database looks like nothing crazy, right? Just, you know, some timestamps for determining when things were created, updated or deleted. So this will let us do soft deletes on any records. We have the same thing here for the geolocation. This is all the metadata just for the IP address and then translating it to actually a legible location. So zip code, state, uh, country, city, things like that. And then uh, another pattern I've seen is metadata. And this is just so you can put arbitrary JSON attached to any record. I really didn't need to do that here for this small project, but I just was too lazy to to take it out. Um, and then these are our optional flags for the votes, uh, which are just whatever uh, color people want to pick. And then I do think this is actually the last last thing, which would be a seed script uh, for our Prisma. So we're just using the faker package to get some fake data. And then I have this little helper function to uh, translate the country code into a emoji. 
pulled that from the internet. I did not make a note of it, but I did not come up with that. And then right here, we're just going to iterate over a thousand keys. So we're going to iterate um, a thousand times and then just create a thousand votes right here with some fake data. And I believe that is specified in the package JSON file. Yeah, the seed command in Prisma. And then you can just do, I think if you just do Prisma migrate reset, it's going to call that every time. It's going to ask us for some credentials. Yep. And then it's going to run the seed command. All right. Well, that's about it. Just wanted to kind of showcase how railway works and how easy it is to get set up on this platform. I really like it. It's super cool. Um, obviously I'm not sponsored or anything by them. I just think really great tool to get up and running fast. So anyway, that's it for me later.